All right. ASMR. Hello. Oh, hey. Welcome to our ASMR segment. Welcome to our ASMR segment. Ooh, we were going to touch random objects in the room. Oh, my God. Let's begin. Guys, about to introduce the new girl. She's very hot. <laughs> Get out. Not as hot as Josh, though. You, you ruined our ASMR segment. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck? We, that was a perfect intro, and wow. Let's cheers it off. Cheers. Okay, I think we have a few different segments that we, we took from last time, from our previous, that we still need to post, but it will be up. The how, what do we should do on a podcast podcast. <laughs> yes, the podcast about podcasts. About podcasting. But we decided that we want to do it more about music, local music, house yes. music, touching base on different things. Everything from history of music, local new releases, um, DJing in general. How did music Dale, start? Dale updates. Birds? Birds? Where did it come from? It's true. <laughs> aliens? Aliens? Did aliens invent music? Did aliens get in contact to us to drop a hot new track? Oh. oh. Aliens oh. are actually coming through with a hot new release. They're dropping a hot mixtape. They hit up Trump. They're like, we want to promo this. And somehow Cascade is collabing with them. <laughs> <laughs> Cascade and Tiesto are first dibs on the new alien mixtape. Alien track. <laughs> Using instruments you've never heard before, sounds you've never heard before. It's going to be hot, hot, hot. Um, But I like the idea of starting off with some maybe Always Dale updates. Yes. So we can go over some stuff. What have we done? Recently got a new sub. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. What do you think? Sounds amazing. I think it's ass. It sounds terrible. No, it's pretty. (laughs) It is absolutely gorgeous. So just today, Josh returned um, the old sub, which is like. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, the old sub. But it's like this big. And then, like, the new sub is, like, huge. Yeah. And we bought it from, because Peter Nygaard went out of business, and then we bought it oh, from him. Again, rest in peace. Rest, like, he's still <laughs> Nygaard or him? <laughs> he died, right? <laughs> <laughs> he should be. Oh, my God. The, we, we go to pick up the new sub, right? And we're like, oh, yeah, there's, like, uh, we're just talking, about like, how, how did you get the sub, blah, blah, blah. And that guy worked, like, directly for, like, Peter Nygaard. Mm-hmm. And we're talking, blah, 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 blah. It's like. And he just brings up, like, yeah, that guy's going to jail. I'm like, oh, for like. Oh, he acted legit? Yeah. And I'm like. Oh, bow time. And I, yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> oh, for what? Um, is it like, is like money embezzlement or some sort mm. of tax fraud? And he's like, no, for like rape and the whole Me Too moment. I'm yeah, like, Jesus I heard about fucking that. Christ, you did? <laughs> yeah, the four, four horsemen of Winnipeg. Oh, like what? The, the Winnipeg Reddit subreddit. Oh, I just, no, I haven't like, seen that. Yeah, there's a few. There's a few of them locally here. What is the four, Peter, what is the the four, four horsemen? horsemen of Winnipeg are Peter Nygaard. Uh, the lady who owns Fun Mountain. I don't think she's raped anybody, but she's just she's she's crazy on conspiracy oh. theories on, online. Um, the Appelts, specifically the really? wife That's of the Appelts. Appelts, yeah. Oh, I want to cool. be your jeweler. You know those <laughs> fucking fire commercials that everyone loves. <laughs> Apparently, they're not good people. Who no. would have guessed by those annoying commercials? No, um, yeah, her, his and wife. And there's a whole subreddit dedicated to these. Well, no, it's a subreddit, and they call it the Four Horsemen of Winnipeg. And then the fourth person, oh, I'm going to blank on who that is. But I know Peter Nygaard was one of them. And he got accused of, of rape. And I think the Appelts as well have. But, you know, don't quote me on that. <laughs> definitely want to upload this. Yeah, yeah. Appelts knowledge. just sues us. Yeah, <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. I, wanted, I want you to be my jeweler. Please don't, please don't sue me. <laughs> exactly. Um but it, the new sub sounds fantastic. It does, yeah. It really fills out like a small Powered basement. Powered by Nygaard. So in, in our basement, we set up this whole crazy setup. And then the only last piece we were renting was just monthly paying this like this like small sub from like um, Long McQuaid. And then we're just like, why not just buy it? And it was super, yeah, and super it's funded like, by Pallister. Deal. And it was, <laughs> thank you, Pallister. That shit would be. No, we, had, we don't have that as part of the funding. What else? Oh, yeah. We should talk about the grant funding that Palliser yeah. put out. So, yeah, there's a grant. If subsidy. you haven't heard yet, Palliser put out like $3 million towards like streaming and online event online stuff. Online activities that promote staying at home and staying safe. And like, I'm not against it, but it shouldn't be your priority. Like, no. I think it's good that you're supporting maybe local arts or events, but like also fund public transit and health care before yeah, you start defund, funding this stuff. Defunding $8 million of our transit system. <laughs> Which is literally losing hundreds of millions of dollars because of COVID. No. Like, no, yeah, defund the thing that is being defunded. But yeah, legit. <laughs> that it's is just, great. No, no, it's, yeah. So, but then as part Priorities. of the grant, you might not know this, as part of the grant, so we applied for some grant funding to get better equipment, et cetera, for our live streams. But as part of the grant, 
at the end, you have to agree to all this, like, posting about, like, safe Manitoba and all this kind of stuff. And it's just like, oh, this is like a big marketing campaign for Palliser. <laughs> this is just like a big, like, oh, let's get all the influencers of the city and get them on our side and, like, See posting about Palliser good is. stuff. Yeah. Because like, well, I mean, they've like all the been doing that already. Ever. I mean, let's be honest. Everyone has already been posting how great Palliser is. So it's like, <laughs> that just seems like a waste of money. Mine as well, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's already on board Everyone with Palliser. Everyone loves you already, right? <laughs> But it's like, it's just a stupid, like, just do your job and stop campaigning. He's like, yes, was, all the money is for saw. campaigning. It's the same with COVID, too. Oh it's like, just God. spend all the money on advertisement. No one actually Stop put trying it to make yourself good look, look good and just start doing research <laughs> and makes, making good policies. Like, <laughs> that can actually make you look good. Yeah. Well, everyone loves Pallister, who's not in Manitoba, apparently. So, <laughs> yeah. He, he cried. He cried. He cried COVID tears. And that cured COVID. They just bottled yeah. his tears, and yeah. that's what's in the vaccine. <laughs> that's what I've heard recently. It's oh, what is? What do you? Th- oh, this is not music related. That's fine. Do you, what do you think about the the vaccine? Do you think it's safe? I know you're a medical professional. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm a doctor. I'm so conflicted. I'm a PhD. I keep reading like the most diverse opinions of like back and forth between this is completely safe, this is not safe. Like I, I don't know what to believe. Should should you take it? Should we take so it? So you should only respect our decision in making. Yeah, this. we are definitely our the opinion one. is the most I, important. My opinion, opinion is really <laughs> but uninformed. I don't know. I follow some people, like some nurses and so on, mm. and they put like some really. I should follow them too. Like really good stats, scientific like backing and stuff. No, they don't have long term studies on it, but mm. they this was one of the largest studies they've ever done on vaccines with like over forty thousand participants, when most like only get like five thousand or something like that. So it seems like quite credible. Plus, we're gonna give it to like nurses and stuff first. So we'll yeah. see. You know, if they're okay. <laughs> well, they, I know <laughs> if, if they do it first, it's okay. But I keep hearing the alternate argument that like big pharma is pushing this through as like a money ploy, <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's pretty. Like, I'm I understand those concerns. <laughs> like, yeah, if they haven't previously been able to get COVID vaccines for other COVID. Well, that's when you don't... hope like government agencies like the FDA or whatever yeah. or whatever the equivalent is for. FDA is just food and drug. There's, mm-hmm. there's another government agency that has to like certify all mm-hmm. these studies and stuff. It can't just be like. But it's kind of getting railroaded through, <laughs> as opposed to going through like normal sanctions and normal. I think, like, I, from my right. understanding, it's going through most of the normal procedures. It's just like most, mostly when they have vaccines and stuff like that, or like things, especially vaccines that aren't like important to rich countries. <laughs> they don't get as much funding, and they don't get as much like participants and trials. True. They don't get as much like. All of these resources that it w- does get when all these rich countries care about it yes. <laughs> and can fund it. So now it's getting that that, that type of stuff where like it can well, go I, way faster. I hope, I hope it's great. I'm very pro vaccine here at Always Dale. I'm very pro vaccine. We're all very. And I'm anti vax, so <laughs> it's good We're to have a diverse. Not anti vax here. I'm just I'm cautious and skeptical of everything and. I think it's this. like I'm I'm pretty on board and obviously let's like, bring it back to music. I would love like if this means if it's already getting rolled out, I'm, I'm feeling kind of optimistic about like summer events and summer festivals. Yes. It would be fantastic for 2021. And that point, like EDC Portugal 2021, <laughs> you in? Are you coming? I'm, I'm down. <laughs> Mass spreading events. <laughs> but if we're all vaccinated, then I, we'll be good. Do you think, mm, I think these events are going to start being vaccinated like – Conditional, it, like be like, do yeah. you come to this event? You have to be vaccinated or something. Like, do you have to wear lines. a mask if you're vaccinated. Probably not. I that, that I have no idea. But yeah. I think I think that would make sense for like events like EDC to be like, oh, to come you have to like be vaccinated or yeah. something. I don't see large scale events like that happening next year. I know that they're oh, trying to. Maybe. I see much smaller, low key events being more likely. I think I think especially at like third world countries where like the regulations are just a little bit more like. Well, some third world countries would be like, yeah, more lax. Like Mexico right like now. Like, like, Me- like Mexico right now has like all their clubs open and stuff and like Tulum and stuff, right? Really? And like Cancun, you can go like clubbing and stuff. Wow. I see it on people's Snapchats. <laughs> yeah, you should definitely post that. And all your friends like, are <laughs> suicidal, trapped in their living room with their cats. Yeah, no, that makes sense. You know, it's the, the Instagram flexors. You got to yeah. flex on Instagram. But yeah, I would too. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. I think we'll see how it goes, but uh, it makes me optimistic for next summer. That'd yeah, be me great. Too. I'm very, be really very optimistic. Fantastic. There could be so kind of different kinds of events, local events too, like everything from like Bring Your Love. I know Full Bloom does now start doing camp out, which is like that means there's. I feel like there's so many more grassroots events around Winnipeg, um, popping up, and like that just super exciting. Yeah, like definitely in the favor of more grassroots events. Less club life, nightlife, the traditional club life. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually happy to see some of those avenues 
hopefully disappear. Yeah. And then hopefully evolve and like become something else. Yeah. <laughs> evolve into better, <laughs> into bigger better and better things. things. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah. We'll see. Cause like you see like a lot of the club environment kind of cater to a certain type of people. Like mm. maybe like, right. Like if you have like bottle service at a club and so on, and that's what you're trying to push. So you're trying to get big ballers to come in and like spend money. So now you kind of like, you kind of track douchebags, you know what I mean? And yeah, I think that kind of went away though. I don't know. I feel like when I first started in like club scene at like 18, 19, there was like more like gang club related stuff. And then more recently in the past like few years, when I started going out in Winnipeg, it was like way less fights. I would never see fights. And yeah. Way less like It depends stuff like where that. you go. I yeah. mean, like up until the things closed, like on Osborne, I'd see fights like every night. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah, for sure. I guess, yeah, you were, you were in Tavern and stuff too. So probably yeah, downtown. To stuff that. Yeah, that, yeah, downtown, especially Tavern. You see a lot of shit going down. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not in favor of that kind of mentality. The aggressive fighting, toxic masculinity, garbage. Yeah. No. If we have ding, ding, ding. We no got up to our no, no we got the first, nationality. We got the first segment down. We got the first segment down. What other segments have we ha- tackled so far? Uh, we local have, local new releases? Nope. We have no local new releases. Okay, we did our <laughs> Dale update. We and did the then, Dale update. Um, uh, a live stream went fantastic. Oh, yeah. We have, a, we have a live stream. We have one coming up. We have one coming up. For Christmas. For Christmas. I think on the 23rd we're thinking of doing it. Yeah, 23rd. And it looks like we're partnering with Ray. We're still in talks mm-hmm. to like do some sort of like charity promo. Charity promo. Yeah, and we will get loaded for your money. Exactly. Your so we're thinking of things Try like. Try to krill us. <laughs> See if you can. <laughs> like donate $20 and like the DJ will take a shot and something yeah. like that. Please make us. Make us. Or, our decision. Or, <laughs> or if it's more appropriate, maybe do like. like the DJ eats a hot pepper, like a ghost pepper every time you donate yes. like $5. Like That's something like nice even, and chill. You, yeah, <laughs> like I want to see DJ relaxed. North puke <laughs> onto the if mixer. If there's a puke all over <laughs> our basement, then we We failed. didn't do it right. We did not do <laughs> it right. There will be alcohol, ghost pepper, <laughs> some kind of puke all over the basement. And then I was even, okay, I haven't brought this up yet, but like what if we also do like if someone donates a hundred dollars, like the Dale house will match like 20 or something. Yes. If you would yes. be down to be into it, like I'm down yes. to do into it. Yes. If we, it's all four of us, it's like five bucks each. And yes. it's like super let's chill match. Let's match every dollar. Let's do it. Let's That's do it. not exactly what I said there. <laughs> I know. Um, I like where you went um, with it though. <laughs> for five dollars for every dollar you donate. <laughs> That's we're literally be out of our a home. Lamborghini. We're donating a Lamborghini for every dollar you donate. Yes, a PS5 <laughs> inside a Lamborghini. We're actually filling up Lamborghinis with PS5s. Yes, <laughs> big ticket giveaway. Here I always say we're balling. Can you imagine you just roll up to Ray and you're just like you just drop off like Lamborghinis <laughs> filled with PS5s? You're like we don't need this. <laughs> we just have we don't, we don't need this money. It's just like give here. this to the homeless. The, the 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 young homeless youth that can't even drive, give them Lamborghinis. That's what they need. Can you imagine they're just all like driving around Lamborghinis? <laughs> they're just sleeping in them. <laughs> oh my god! But moving on, what else do we have? And we're trying to plan. We'll see what's happening, but we're trying to plan some big streams, maybe in collaboration with like iconic Winnipeg locations. Mm-hmm. And like get some stuff going there, but it's still in the works. So we'll we'll update as it goes. Yeah, we don't give it too much away yet. We can't give it all to it. Yeah, we gotta be a little bit like you know zesty about it. Yeah, for sure. Just a little bit. But we, we might be doing a live stream inside the Manitoba Legislative Building. Just saying. We might be. Pallister might be DJ. We're doing it at, at Pallister's house. <laughs> Outside his house. <laughs> at Pallister's house in his bathroom. Actually, it's a really interesting location. <laughs> We're gonna take a shower. <laughs> Uh, I hope Pallister watches these. Do you think yeah, I think, I think he's our biggest fan. Honestly. Okay. Um, so we have other segments coming up. We have local... Local scene history. We talked about local scene a little bit. We talked about that. Yeah. And then we also... Um, new releases. Um, Faja released a, a track called Midnight last week. Ooh, I listened to it. It was it? pretty good. It was yeah. like, it's like... Obviously, it's like a speed house stuff. And it's really... But I don't know. He has a really good musical talent to it. And what's that song he put out? Oh... Fuck up the beat. Have you heard "Fuck up the beat"? I have not. No. He put that out like a month ago, but it was so good. And he like sings on it, and it kind of slows down for a bit, and then like builds back he up. He sings on his own stuff. Yeah. Oh, I didn't and know he's he good. Yeah, he kind of like marinates you. Marinates Ooh, you. Beautiful. Marinades you. Marinades. Serenades you. Serenades. you. Serenades. <laughs> he marinades your meat. <laughs> He marinates you. My meat is your, very marinated. Your voice after marinades I see Fasha. me. 
I, I, last time I saw it was very marinated. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. Oh no! It was wasn't. It was also at Downtown Streets too. I think yeah, that's I heard one that. That, that was so good. That's too. very good. Yes. Um, but then even so, I played on the last live stream. Um, Ricky Savage's track, Ooh, unknown local artist. Shout out Ricky Savage. Um, he's a savage. He's apparently a savage. I met him at like a commerce social. I think he was not a commerce social. Commerce on the quad. He was like DJing the beer gardens. Um, but I just saw him post like a track. It was called Badass Bitch on Spotify. And it's like a pretty good like housey track, good like kind of tribal drums into it, Ooh. good structure. Like it's nice and creative too. Mm-hmm. Like both drops are different, like a really good vibe to it. I don't know. It's like I don't see many people. Maybe I don't know about it. If you have good house tracks, send it yes, over. But please. like that kind of house music, where it's like the kind of house I play. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of house music. You know, that are you kind saying of house like music. you don't like any of the house music in the city? <laughs> no, this guy is actually. Good. I'm just saying it's like the other house music is like not. Or like let's say the stuff House a Panda and Faja plays is not what I usually play, right? Yeah. It's like super, super fast. It's really super called Speed, speed House. Yeah, super and speed. it doesn't like blend with the rest of my library of when I'm playing, right? Also, but where's stuff, the like, techno? The techno, yes. Hit me the with techno. the techno. Where's the local I techno scene? Ta- Please <laughs> shout out local Winnipeg techno DJs. I need some. I think there must be... There must be. There some. has to be some. There must. They're be just some. not given platforms. Yeah. I don't think. Well, I was telling you about that one guy who like has who plays on some sort of hardware soundboard kind of stuff, like mm. not on CDJs, not on like whatever. I need to. I'm gonna dig through Instagram to find him, but I found him and I was just very like impressed that there's someone out there just doing that kind of stuff. Because it's like that's some of my favorite big artists, like yeah. Paul Krakenberg and like Ben yeah. Bomer, like these big like house and like artists I play like Tomorrowland. You can see their streams on like. Not their streams, but they're like Tomorrowland sets on YouTube, and they're just fantastic. The way you can control so much more with like these crazy hardware than more than just like just CDJs, mm. it's just so sick. More you can like, see them bring in the horns and stuff, like boop, 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 boop. It's like so fantastic. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's it just like the whole experience just feels like more complete and like him more like orchestrating it is really nice. Yeah. For sure. So we're gonna make you the first techno DJ because yeah, we can't I'm gonna find be, any. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be the first techno DJ in the city because <laughs> no. there's never been one. Oots. The other day I was I was overhearing you like and cats. play some pretty hard techno in the shower. Yeah, I love I love <laughs> techno. It's kind of new to me because in my opinion of techno was very mediocre previously because yeah. I hadn't heard a lot of good stuff. Who are you? Who are you like following now that you really like from techno? Oh, Emi- Emily Lenz. Oh yes, she's phenomenal. Um, we really put me on the spot here. That's um, a good. That's a good call right um, there. Oh shoot, I'm blanking on his he name. Sucks. He just passed. Passed he away. Just passed. Oh, I O. I O. Yeah. He's, oh, that's one, so he's sad. my favorite. He's the he's the one that really hooked me into into techno. Oh and man, took a really credible, like. All right, um, like actually, R.I.P. Terms, <laughs> on that yeah, one, actually, yeah. R.I.P. That's so sad. A young, young did, man. Did they passing. release how he passed away yet? I still haven't heard anything, but yeah, he was absolutely phenomenal and like bringing techno nothing more to the mainstream. So mm. I think it's kind of like a niche electronic genre yeah. that isn't very credible within the industry. And like I said, I don't know anyone locally. There's not very much a, a scene here yeah. for techno music. It's, Even within is, a small electronic community. It is like that here, but if you go to Europe, like techno is like, it's every, is. That's where <laughs> a lot of it came from. Yeah. Right? Like, that's the early, early well, if you re- a lot if of it you was If you really techno. take it back, they say techno rigid in Detroit. But if you look at the, I need to send you this. It's called, oh, I had it up. This documentary, Pump Up the Volume, mm-hmm. a, ho- a History of House Music documentary. So good. Mm-hmm. And it talks about how it goes from like it starts in Chicago with like the warehouse yeah, culture. I heard, heard in Chicago. And then um, I forget where the artists who take it in Detroit and they add like a different type of drum beat to it and they, they start that kind of techno sound mm-hmm. and they kind of start that. I could be wrong. Fact check me on this, but they start <laughs> that kind of techno sound. But what happens is like people in the UK start to love like house music and all this kind of stuff. And it becomes more popular in the UK than it does in the US. That's usually how it happens. <laughs> you know? And then and then that's like, it goes in UK and then it goes to like Ibiza and Ibiza becomes a hub for it and so on. So like if people think house music, they think Europe, even though it started in like Chicago and stuff. Mm. But it's like, it became that first wave. It seemed like it was, it got really big in like Europe or UK. And that's at least like, at least what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously it wasn't there. I can't prove that. But it's super like interesting to see that's like that's not where it is. But now, like when I lived in Europe for a few months, it's just like techno. Even like artists, 
Like you see a house artist play, they're gonna play techno at the start of their set, and then they're gonna play their house songs, <laughs> or like whatever you see, or like there's just like full venues dedicated to just techno. Wow, that's phenomenal. I'd love to see. Just it's a really cool. Set. Some of it's just like some of them are like there's really cool. Like I went to one techno venue, like a little warehouse in the outskirts of Paris. Super cool. Um, and like the venue, the lighting was so good. They had like good strobes right behind the DJ. Everything fantastic. The thing, the thing is like the tech, and I went with my friend who was not like into any house music, into any techno. <laughs> and, and this was like, and this is, techno. and this is like, yeah, this is like Thank the you. veteran level shit. Like this is just like the most repetitive beat for like two hours long. <laughs> if, if, Blasting as loud as possible. <laughs> if it's, if there's good progression, it's so worth it. You yeah. Know? I like, think it has it some has good to, aspects to it. It has to progress. But it's like, it's almost like that acquired taste kind of feel where it's yes. like, it's not, it's not it like, it's not very palatable. Someone from coming that like, she likes like jazz music and she liked like more like mainstream pop music. And it's just like, that's, <laughs> that's such a big jump away. She was literally like, get me out of here. <laughs> but it's like, no, like take it in as like a cool cultural experience. Cause like, this is like the nightlife that so many people like consume in Paris. And we're so lucky cause we were going to go to like a mainstream club. At least in my perspective, we were lucky. In her perspective, maybe not so much. <laughs> she wanted that. Shout out Rachel. Uh, but we met some people on the bus, or not on the bus, on the subway. They're like, mm. they're like, I'm like, oh, where are you going, blah, blah, And they're like, I'm like, oh, where are you going? And it's like, oh, we're going to this techno warehouse. And they're like, you want to come? I'm like, yes, I want to go. <laughs> and we end up in the outskirts of like Paris on this like random warehouse. That's so sick. Yeah. To, like, could have died, in. but so worth it. Honestly, so worth it. <laughs> I take those chances. Yeah. And it was like, it's a really good, solid vibe, but... Yeah, it's just way more mainstream there and it's way more like palatable. And what I see is like I think eventually that kind of taste and what I'm already seeing is like EDM music, house music is like building here. And I think in like five years we're going to be where Europe is now or something like that, you know, like that, that maybe, maybe not. But like that's mm. kind of where I see it going. That and like rap music stuff. But like rap music is pretty big in France, too. So, yeah, kind of like two I, parallel I, it just sides. seems like more country, honestly. That so is country true. techno. They don't have country to hold them back in in, in, <laughs> in Europe. They don't have that to hold back the musical I, taste. <laughs> I just see more country. <laughs> just Diplo bringing in more country. Yeah, thank you, Diplo. For ruining more genres you, than any other yes, artist. Thank you for ruining EDM. <laughs> and just you. kidding, we love you if you're watching. I love you, Diplo. You're a phenomenal. <laughs> you're daddy. And you're sexy. <laughs> come on the podcast. Yes, come with us. <laughs> and then come on our face. <laughs> <laughs> I will take it. I will oh. take a dip load. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest dip load. We, <laughs> we covered some music. good segments. History Anything else music. you want to DJing segment? How's your DJ been going? I only did it once. So <laughs> and, and I downloaded I'll, a ton more music. I want What's more your strategy? Experience. What's your approach? What's my approach? Um, just finding funky bass lines, something mm. that fits in my niche that I can keep creating a, uh, a playlist that fits that aesthetic. Yeah. And then, and as I DJ, I'll try to figure out what, what mixes well together. Nice. It's really beginner stuff, but. Yeah. As I told I you, Josh was apparently it. pretty impressed with that's the first round. Great. Goal. That's great. That's great. He, gives you he will confidence. never say that to me, but. No, I've, no, he won't. Just like my he father. Won't. No, he definitely <laughs> That's what you call I him, Daddy. That's Daddy, Daddy Nork. Josh. Daddy, Daddy Nork. Nork. Yeah. <laughs> it's his alias. It's yes. his. It's his. I tech want house alias. <laughs> tech house alias. I want his disapproval. It keeps me going. Please keep telling me how terrible. What's the funniest thing? So like his first time DJing, like Alex's first time DJing. It was like Josh kind of working on lights and like yelling every time it went shitty. And then me actually like <laughs> helping Alex out. Like when he was like, how do I do this? It's like a very like good cop, bad cop kind of vibe. It was nice though, because I was so scared of fucking up. <laughs> so Josh, I kept like looking up like, oh no, it kept me really on my toes. You know, if I just yeah. been on my own, I probably would have like fucked up a little bit more. And then you like, know, at least you know when you're doing bad. You're like, was that good? They're not, no one's softballing yeah. it. They're like, no, that was no, shit. That was, that was yeah. You got to tell heard. me that's a good friend. Yeah. When they're yeah, like, yeah. they're very honest to yeah face. that's why i always like wake you up and just remind you you're garbage <laughs> every day <laughs> every start of every you're day garbage you're, you're trash <laughs> you'll never be anything just like papa <laughs> just like dad just like home hey that got me where i am today so shout out my dad for inspiring me it got us so far i've proved you wrong <laughs> i've dj'd once 
watch out on the next that's Diplo. what he told you when you were five years old like yeah. alex you'll never be a dj yeah. no, he inspired me his uh his music his musical collection is oh, the reason yeah. i'm into music like i am i was just there today he has a what did you grow up ten thousand dollar ten thousand uh record collection and what so, kind of music was that Okay. Oh, usually mostly classic rock. Nice. There's some old R and B and soul, and some really? disco, really? some bit of disco wow. really nice in the eighties. Uh, some like a little bit of synth wave. No, uh, way. it's not synth wave. Synth pop, new wave. Um, oh, of course. Mostly from Jesus. my mom. She was more the poppy taste. But yeah, I kind of mo- mo- a lot of that. And my taste just branched off from there. No hip hop. And did you like whatsoever. acquire those tastes as you were young? Like, were you into super young? Rock? I was obsessed. I was a rocker kid. I listened to insane amounts of like, like who? Like, well, it was like my fundamentals were like Pink Floyd, like progressive. Oh, um, Led Zeppelin and the Beatles. The Beatles are still, I would say, my favorite band of all time. But I've progressed way beyond that at this point. I like to revisit classic rock. I still have a huge uh, discography of it, but. Um, my tastes have broadened more now towards the edges, towards I have like hip hop. I'm a huge hip hop head, mm. electronic music, I like jazz, R and B, like a little bit of everything blues. It's it's all over the place now, as you can yeah. hear from my room. I'm all over the fucking place. Yeah, even some lo fi there. I like lo fi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. I love I love every honestly, I don't think I can find a genre that's bad. As long as you I find good music within the genre. Yeah, I used to hate on country. It's good country music. <laughs> I was going to say, except for country. Except for country, but no. I, was, I haven't really dipped my toe into country it. music. You but just, I, I get the appeal. It's like, I find it more like chilling music too. Like mm-hmm. country, like kind of like laid back, like kind of vibe out. Like, like after a breakup. <laughs> when you're really sad. Oh, and yeah, maybe you have a really specific scenario yeah. where you play it. <laughs> but it's the same with electronic music. And if, if you're not searching for good electronic music, then the stuff that finds you is probably not going to be very good. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're gonna f- if you have to search for it. It won't find you. Exactly. And then, like, if you listen to enough of it, then you'll get, like, an ear for, like, what's yeah, good and yes. what is it and, like, what's creative taste. and what isn't. And, like, that's kind of part of the process, too. Myself, I grew up on, like, also classic, like, my dad, like, Guns N' Roses and, like, mm. also, like, Latin, like Hair Brazilian metal. music, too, like. Ooh. crazy like guitar brazilian stuff yeah i don't even know what the artists are i should probably ask him because they had like you visit that exactly and um and all and then my sit i also acquired my sister sace which was like cold play and stuff like that <laughs> so like super manly like <laughs> not a not a fan but once person, again but no, no toxic, toxic masculinity. masculinity we're not no. about that i listen to Zero. disco music so i am a fag <laughs> <laughs> oh wait well, whoops can i undo uh, you can undo that undo <laughs> undo he didn't mean to say it in that way unless you're referring no. to bikers as oh but i was talking process. to my dad today about the, the i don't know if we mentioned on the podcast but the fall of disco and the pushback against disco wasn't a normal genre dying it was, was a he, huge was he cultural live? does he remember it like yes oh he remembers yeah. it oh, live yeah, yeah. yeah it was a huge cultural wave to destroy disco because you had all these white rockers that hated the fact that women wanted to like w- women love disco because they could dance women want to dance yeah they want to dance right but all these white rocker guys didn't want to dance and you know all these guys that embrace disco and embrace dancing expression yeah. you know self-expression uh and they didn't like that that was getting those guys are getting along with women so they pushed back against disco and and called them a bunch of fags. Yeah. And it was a huge homophobic pushback, cultural pushback against expression, basically, self-expression. Yeah. Um, and it's basically a homophobic, sexist, racist. Death. Yeah, movement. The movement to, <laughs> to, to, the death to, to death kill disco. disco. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's ridiculous that And what that, and what side happened. was your dad on on this? Was he pro disco during this this My dad liked disco, but I I I don't think he ever participated in either side. He's just yeah. he likes music in general. Cool. He definitely falls more to the was the rocker taste. And he, he's he grew up in Winnipeg, right? Yeah. Cool. He he does not have that homophobic tendency. He's quite not a traditionally masculine male so oh, he would cool. not have been like well this does, doesn't rock this isn't manly <laughs> enough where's, where's rock and roll bro <laughs> it's, legit yeah and so. it's like to add to that so if you even i think the house documentary that i mentioned before I'll, I'll, I'll plug it in one more time so i need to inform myself more pump up the volume on this topic but i'm fascinated um pump up the volume 
it talks about like that, right? And they talks about like one event where everyone brought in like records of disco to burn at um at after a baseball game or something like that or at a baseball stadium. Like it was a big event mm-hmm. where they went and they just burned all this disco like stuff. But then people were mentioning like even the documentaries, like it wasn't just disco. No, there's it other was, like, black artists, was other black older, artists, older R and B artists, and it was like, oh, in. this isn't about. Disco. No. This is like a racist movement yes. against black music. And then you had all these disco artists like Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, Off the Wall. It's an amazing disco record. Who actually specifically stepped away from disco in their up uh, their future projects to separate themselves from the disco movement so oh, wow. that they would be taken credibly. Wow. You know, all these artists like refused to do disco or have disco fundamentals or they would have slight disco, but the imagery, like Madonna's and Michael Jackson's imagery changed to less disco style wow. just to ve- make sure they were not at all associated so they could get and see incredibly that's it's, crazy it's it's kind of disgusting actually yeah. i love disco that aesthetic is so sick to me it's so cool i don't i don't care what there's so is. much cool stuff bring it even... back bring self-expression back it's just expressive exactly i think there is in a lot of ways coming with like the festival culture yes. and like this dress up culture that, that is that is coming along but even like Express touching yourself. it back to like a parent i was talking to my boss but like He's like, I think he's in his 40s. <laughs> uh, he's ancient. Hasn't played, he's ancient. He's like, he's 80 million years old. And uh, <laughs> when he was going out in nightlife, what what is now Cowboys apparently used to be called a place called Boogie Nights. Oh, my God. And it used to be like a disco place with like a big yes. disco ball in the middle. I'm like, that is so sounds fantastic. Clubs started. I'm like, that would be so cool. Bring yeah. that a huge disco ball in Cowboys. Why don't like, we have a disco ball? Uh, I need a disco like ball. in our is house a, or yes, in general? Yes. I've had, <laughs> There's no. nowhere we could put it maybe in the I, office instead of that light we can just have a disco i want ball. one in the basement but i just don't think this room but i Are you love kidding me? Yeah, disco like the ball. basement's like, like the ceiling's light. like a so beautiful foot above our head we'll find us we'll, we'll find a place once it's, we buy so now that like nygaard's get selling out they're, they're selling the they space have disco balls right <laughs> no we can just put one in the giant oh my god i looked at the space and it's just so perfect for a nightclub if anyone wants to invest <laughs> and help us buy nygaard it's, is it Sherbrooke, too big is it too big the to space? be a nightclub? Yeah. Well, we look at it. It it's would a, be like one of the bigger, bigger than night- Cowboys. No, it's because mm, not two floors. Yeah, it's probably not bigger than Cowboys. It's bigger than like. I'm four surprised that can. But it, that like, that's if you club. look at the place, it literally looks like a nightclub. Like it has like wow, new, like UV lights all around it. It has like cool trees popping out. It has trusses with like with like DJ lights on it already. Like all these good trusses. It has like, men sexually assaulting women, just like a nightclub. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> You'll get the full experience. You know? Get the full nightclub experience. <laughs> but if you want to, you know, buy it out and then like we'll like do an exorcism or something and get the demons so out. Exercise the Whatever Nygaard need demons. <laughs> to get those those demons Fuck out of there. Peter Nygaard. <laughs> Fuck Peter Nygaard. Fuck Peter Nygaard. But like I like his sub. It's really good. His sub is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> but it drowns out those women's screams. Yeah, that would be such a sick nightclub. The Nygaard space. Yes, we so should. Good. If anyone definitely. has two point two million dollars lying around and wants to buy us for us. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get that in the funding? Pallister. Pallister. Fund. Daddy Pallister. Daddy Pallister. <laughs> fund our nightclub, please. Um, <laughs> to stop COVID. Honestly, it would be kind of on track record with all the decisions he's making. He's like, I'm a fun, fun nightclub oh, to stop COVID. <laughs> Trads it. <laughs> um, taking it back to like the, the disco death. Yes. Kind of aspect. Um, and tying it back into that pump up the volume uh, documentary. They talk about how house was born was they took disco tracks and then DJs would like add a drum machine into the back of it. And that was like, that was the first house tracks was like mm. disco mixed with like these drum machines and like, oh, what are they called? Like 909s or whatever. Like these like yeah. very rudimentary, yeah, like, yeah. like hardware tech. I don't know that much about it, but I like, I don't know about drums either, but, <laughs> but they like mix it together. And those were like the first house tracks and they're called house tracks because it was like it was played at the warehouse mm. and then they were like eventually would go and get like oh give me what that was played at the warehouse give me what was played at the warehouse and they just went like give me that house track yeah and that's how and their house came they were cheap from what i've heard they were cheaper to produce than disco tracks because they would just use synths as opposed to live instrumentation you know what i mean you didn't need yeah, 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 yeah. synths is cheap anybody with a synth could yeah they could get a house piece track. of hard work and then yeah and then, it'd be really cheap and then it took off 
Yeah. Because Disco is dying anyway. You need so. to watch it. So it's I would so love good. to. I just need Maybe to be night. way more ver- well versed on the history of music because I'm fascinated by the link between like music and cultural movements because mm. they're like so intertwined. And like as much as we try to understand the history of music, we don't really know. Yeah. Like it's a best yeah. guess, but like music just kind of develops and we have. It's like a history, the best knowledge we can we can gain. It is interesting. But we don't really know the yeah. exacts. I know what you're getting at because it's like you don't really understand mass human behavior to like no. a good degree. It's like, why did this who take started off, something? Right? It's like, and people take credit for it, but like who actually started it? A lot of times you, you find like, and like me from studying marketing, I find it's like a lot of these like th- things that are popular in art, it's because like, it's not because it's like naturally good or like hasn't been here. Like sometimes it's something business. put Someone it on. Someone put a business. Something put it on. It was right? hip. It was hip hop, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Hip hop finally started actually being corporatized and sold because some guys oh. wanted to sell it, not because the DJs who were originally hosting the MCs hosting DJ parties didn't ever want to record hip hop. It was supposed to be a cultural movement Mm -hmm. for freedom and expression. And the people who started to record hip hop, we just wanted to sell it. (laughs) And actually people hated them. The people, the MCs of the time hated them. Yeah. The Rapper's Delight, the Sugar Hill Gangs, the first recorded hip hop track. It was a bunch of dudes who worked like a pizza parlor. (laughs) It was like, (laughs) it wasn't skilled MCs. The skilled MCs had nothing and wanted nothing to do with it. That's interesting. Because a lot of music, um, especially in the black community, traces back to the civil rights era and shows trace back to they need an outlet after the civil rights era and their freedom of expression and they wanted mm-hmm. to express themselves and they did it through through artistic forms, hip hop. Yeah. And um they thought like recording would take away from that from a yeah recording. And a lot and, of and, people and, like, at the time. Like corporatizing it or like yes. commercializing it. And obviously people after were able to actually express themselves through the music and make a difference, but yeah, at the end of the day, when you start to incorporate something, you kind of lose the whole message. Rock and roll used to be about something. About something. <laughs> don't know what now it was. was what, now, yeah, now, what was? But now we don't know. know. <laughs> now we have no idea. Now it's now it's dead. <laughs> rock and roll is dead. And, from and no one needs to kill it. It just kind of died. It off. just died on its own. <laughs> yeah. It's upsetting. Fantastic. EDM is well alive though. Um, that was a fantastic conversation yeah uh, do you have anything else to add anything else you want to add nothing i need to educate myself more before yeah I keep we, speaking. we can do some more ho- homework before <laughs> the next one because i think i tapped out all my knowledge on yeah house music i realize here. how un- uninformed i am no but you had su- <laughs> such a great like points about like well, at least your dad's experience with the disco yeah. movement and what you know about this and the hip-hop stuff that's yeah, so interesting it's, so inter- it's super interesting to me i love this stuff do you think we're going what's the culture movement now what we're we going through yeah now? raves it's it's electronic music yeah like, um hip-hop's dead <laughs> You think uh, so? I think I think hip hop still has like if you it look, has, you know, if you look at like Spotify, most played tracks. Yeah, it's, it's not Drake. EDM. It's all Drake. It's like Drake, but oh, the number, like, the number one like, is like is like uh, the weekend right now with blinding lights. Like I yeah, think, that's not even hip hop anymore. <laughs> that is that's true. That's a synth pop throwback. It's an '80s nostalgia album. It's like the reason he's big again is because I, w- I fell off the weekend. I used to love his early mixtapes and he's completely 180'd with his sound and went in towards uh, 80s nostalgia. And you and hate it's, that? I love it. Oh, oh I okay. love it. Oh, I love it. I love this new take and I think this is his new character and this is where he should grow from. But he, it's barely hip hop at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like I try to identify that as hip hop is quite, it's quite blinding lights. Like yeah, it's, it's like true. saxophone all over the fucking album. It's like, it's, I love it. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's. I think hip hop has a place that it's not, that's not leaving in our culture. No, not yet. but rock isn't either. Rock isn't. But in terms of like really pushing boundaries, I think it definitely has its place in both rock and hip hop. But I'd say like the. The future and the next movement is in electronics music. I would even say I think hip hop is more culturally influenced just because of the lyricism within it, right? It's like yeah. it has, right? Like people but talk about messages. It like anymore. What well, is it like? Is, well, like even spots. Lil Baby like took what's his new, what's that track that was like went crazy about like the the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, I'm not um, that familiar with Lil Baby. Yeah, yeah, but that that just came out and was huge. I think it was mm. was it Grammy nominated? I don't know. Well, I'm not obviously well versed in like hip hop stuff. Yeah, but, but it talks I, all about kind of like it, it because you have liters literacism. It, I think it has. Um, more ability to impact culture, right? Like I think people are impacted by Kendrick Lamar's mm. album, or, yes. and so on in a yes. way because of a because you can actually communicate a message more than you can through like house music. Definitely, but I feel contemporary and contemporary artists. There's not a lot of 
lyricism that's impactful or culturally moving. That is point. true. There is more like it's, kind of mumble rap kind is, of vibey stuff. And I love that stuff. I'm yeah, not yeah. saying that's a necessity it has for a music. Place, for sure. It has a place. But I just don't feel like it's pushing culture in the same way that it used yeah. to. Yeah. Like in until, 90s hip hop, until it was now way that we have WAP, like that, that's like a Bible for that people. is for white people, <laughs> no, but for, for women, for, no, for people, for people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do love this new trend of women being gangster as fuck, and I don't think that's a new trend. Track. I think it's now just being like well, Nicki Minaj being has taken been around forever. seriously, but it was like there was only allowed one woman, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was only like you could have yeah, one man. woman, and that was it. It was, was little Kim. Iggy Azalea? Iggy Azalea? It was, oh, she was rejected. <laughs> she was, no, she was it was little Kim, and then it was like, well, there's there's people between, but then I'm said little Kim, Nicki Minaj, and then it was like, now it's a diversity, and you have all these women a little being bit very, more. very like, um, I don't know, impactful and uh, like courageous, courageous and, and gangster on a beat. Beautiful. And I, just, I love seeing more women entering the music industry. Yeah, and even in the electronic music scene, to see these. <sighs> Yeah. Tiny little cute girls playing just dirty, grimy fucking music, <laughs> and like it's so it's so great. Well, I, I recently love found it. you know I love Eli it. and Fur. I never know those. It was like I think it's their sisters, and no, it's like two know. girls. And I didn't know that. Like, I got listened to Eli Fur, and never know those two girls. It's like I want to know who's more of them, but it's like another familiar. one turned on techno. Deborah DeLuca is so good. She's okay, like an I, Italian like techno send me, beast. Semi, semi. I played send me. on the last stream. It was like that one techno song I, think I played. I can maybe know her. DeLuca it sounds really familiar. Yeah. Deborah DeLuca, if you want some good techno. Ooh, so and she's like she's right now putting out a lot. Like almost every week, she's putting out something good that's like mm, like nice and poppy and like kind of pushing stuff and like yeah. really like bassy. And I think it's it's surprising to see how many like there's how many good women are in techno specifically. <laughs> yeah, it does it's seem like a trend there, right? In within techno. I don't know. We'll have to look more into it. But like, it's like Emily it's interesting like it. I'm thinking of all the the women I know in EDM and it's like so many of them are in techno. It's like or whip, like in harder whip stuff. Cream. She's like that's just slaps. I don't know who whipped cream dark, is. Like, Dubstep, but like, or like, or like uh, Alice in Wonderland too, yes. who's like harder, trap. like trappy yep. like the same with her cream is trap. It's so good too. The, the way it's she makes it is so good. Yeah, I love I love that trend, and I hope it continues. And yeah, fantastic. Well, let's wrap it up there because we've been talking for four ages, and uh, yes, your glasses empty. I'm, I'm empty so already. Cheers, anyways. Yeah, enjoy that Coke. That was beautiful. We love you. Thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, this was you. the Always Dale House podcast. We'll try to keep it going. If you have any ideas, comment below. If you have any funding, follow please give us, us two points. Follow us on TikTok. At Always Dale. At Always Dale to see um see some- Santi's hair flips. We'll do hair flips. Do a hair flip for us, Santi. Oh, wow. Is this what you want? What a fuck boy. <laughs> I want to fuck him. I'm taken. It's only Alex. <laughs> Her name's and, not Alex. And I'm Josh. not taking it. And maybe Josh sometimes. <laughs> only Daddy Nork. Daddy Nork. Mm.